Round two. Round two. And now Rob with. <laughs> I am ready now. Needs. Yes. Okay. Welcome back to Final Third Friday. I'm Rob. And I'm Isaiah. And today we'll be pairing the 1502 10th anniversary cigar that just came out this year. It's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Mexican San Andreas binder with Nicaraguan fillers. And we're pairing that with a backbone single barrel that's finished in Laird's Applejack barrels. These are uh, all MGP sourced, but this one is finished, and it's actually the first back finished backbone I've seen. I'm not sure I've seen another one, um, but if they do more, I'll definitely be interested in it because this one's delicious. It really is. Sitting at 122.2 proof, uh, it'll knock your socks off. It's so good. And, it's probably uh, my favorite barrel or uh, yeah, backbone release that they put out yet. It is really stellar. I did enjoy the uncut this year that just came out. Uh, their their tenth anniversary as well. The decade down. Decade down. Yeah. What did I call it? Uncut. Oh yeah, it was, it was an uncut, but it was yeah. the decade down. Um, it was good too. This one here is special. That that Laird's Applejack barrel just does something yeah. crazy good to the bottle. So oh, if you guys are looking at the label, thinking, how do they know it's finished in Laird's Applejack barrels? It's on the side. You see that? Right there. That's where it says it. It's about and like that's the four one thing barrel. on this bottle. If you on see this side. in stores, you really got to be careful because it definitely has to say single barrel. The label looks very identical, almost identical to the uncut, regular uncut. But that says single barrel, and then you can look on the sides to see what the finish is on it. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good, and hopefully you can find some. If not, we've got plenty of it here. You can come in here and get yeah. pours all day long. Totally. This cut is brought to you by Calibri and <laughs> the man Ponder. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dan doesn't sponsor me. No, he doesn't. Sponsor does not. me, Dan. He doesn't even watch this. He doesn't even like you. There's no way. I've never met him. I know. He still didn't like you, though. That's okay. I told him who you are. Yeah, I deserve it. Well, Amazon just showed up because I saw Lord of the Rings on the side of the van. Nice. What do you get on the cold draw, Rob? I'm getting a lot of hay and a little bit of fig. That's where I'm at with it, too. Yeah. A little bit of sweetness, not super sweet, not like a raisiny sweetness, just a little bit of fig. Yeah. And yeah, definitely absolutely. got a lot of that hay in there, so very Quite nice. Yeah. Well, let's light her up and get her. Well, let's her check out the whiskey first. Oh. Mm. This is my first cigar of the day, so hopefully my palate's in good shape. First cigar, but not your first pour. Not my first pour. This is like my fourth pour. Yeah. But. Uh, on the nose Man. of that, you do get that, that apple quality. It's almost apples and cinnamon and oak. Yeah. Yeah, but not like a, not like an Irish apple. It's just more of a, I mean, you're at 122 proof. It's more of a hot apple. Oh. Mm. It, it tastes like a cheap apple pie. <laughs> Like a grocery so store good. apple pie. Oh my god! Uh, it's just so. It's like the old McDonald's apple pies. Yeah. When they used to actually, even though they were cheap, they were still really good. Yeah. You, know, you fry your mouth out because it was so freaking yeah. hot. <laughs> Two with so your mouth open, oh. just trying to <laughs> disperse some of the heat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that is so good. It's delicious. Cool. So this has a slightly, slightly close, close foot, foot but. Which I'm I would normally toast the end. Yeah, I would normally light on this, but honestly, it's just maybe an eighth of an inch closed, if if that. Um, so it's probably going to burn better if you go ahead and light it all the way. This light brought to you by Vissel and Final Third Lighters. <laughs> Hopefully, as soon as our Calibri lighters come in, it'll brought, be brought to you by Calibri as well. But you're gonna have to reach out to Calibri and try to get a sponsorship. I wish. They don't care about me, man. They hardly care about this shop enough to bring stuff in. I will say now that we got our, our rep local here, that has helped a lot. You know what one thing he told me is? He was like, oh, yeah, we're real quick on our, uh, on our warranty and repair work. You know why? Because he will do it for us. Since he's our local rep now, if you have a if you buy something here, I, I straight up was like, dude, I mailed mine in. It took him over three months. 
And, that's and he why, said, that'll never happen with me. And no. I was like, and that's why he was God saying his, his selling point as a rep was, if you buy a cutter or a lighter here from Calibri, if it goes bad, you bring it back in here. Basically, if I have the exact, exact same cutter or lighter, I will give you one right then, and then he will send it back and get us a, a replacement. My man. That's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm excited to actually work with him. Oh my God! Yeah, the retro hell immediately gives you this um, the black pepper spice right on the nose, but then it leaves on the tongue and leaves me some uh, dark chocolate. Um, I could totally see that. There's some cedar, a lot of cedar, yeah. a lot of cedar. Um, there's like a, a funky quality, like a, a umami kind of on my okay. roof of my mouth right now. Very tasty. Very tasty. Yeah, a stellar. Mm. With the pour. Let's go. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh. So that, uh. The oh. whole. So from smoke to sip, it's like you just made apple pie ice cream. Yeah, from sip to smoke, you're just getting a, a nice little um, black pepper bomb on top of your. Um, your apple pie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, That's good. That's really very good. Nice. Mm. My sister's doing something over there with that. You can open it. I don't know what it is. What'd you get, Tam? Lighters. lighters? Why do yeah. we need lighters from Amazon? I don't know why I would have gotten lighters from Amazon. Live opening boxes from Amazon. Yeah. Welcome to Unbox Therapy. Tam, do you not know how to open a box? What'd you get? What the heck is that? Is it Lisa or is it me? Here, we'll find out, we'll right find out what here. random thing we bought from you. What oh. random thing do we buy from you? Oh, this is one of those today? cocktails. Oh, yeah, this smokers. is what I got. I got this. So this is just another one of those cocktail smokers. Why did we get this? Because I've got the box down there. Yeah. And I've had a bunch of people asking about cocktail smokers. I thought we can have one for individuals. If we have someone that wants just one, bo one the box we'll use for pairs. But then also it came with several different um, wood chips. Yeah. So I figured we'd give it a shot. That's fine. Thank you. We can just smoke them with cedar. Can't quite fit it in your Glen Cairn, no. Why would you want to smoke your whiskey? I don't. You're you're a little bitch today. Have you noticed that? <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I just asked, why would you want to smoke your whiskey? Hi, my name's Isaiah, and, and I'm a little and bitch today. today. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me! You don't want to. You don't want to smoke your whiskey. You didn't even work yesterday. So I did. Shut your mouth. I felt like crap yesterday. We're recording this on Saturday morning, yes, the Saturday are. prior to when this drops. So. We are. You know who did come in yesterday? Just grab your glass, Doctor Johnston. Scott Johnston. Nice. Hmm. And. Dan and Jamie Hart. Oh, nice. Cheers to them. And Dan is on the pick today. Mm -hmm. So, old 50. He's on so, the, the Saturday, we're recording on Saturday the 15th? Yeah, 15th. My you, watch is you wrong. Just looked... My watch is wrong. It's a, oh. It says 14th, but it's 15th today. Um, the, uh, the Indiana Bourbon Club is doing a pick at old 55 of our next barrel release, which I'm excited about. Love everything from Old 55. Um, and uh, Dan Hart is on that one. I don't know. Is Scott on that one, too? I don't think he uh, is. Is he? No. Uh, Jeff Love is. Jeff's on it. Good, good. Yeah. So, you know, it's good, definitely going to be a completely different um, group of people on this pick. I think the only one that's a, a repeat is Cole, I believe, right? Yeah. I think it is from what I saw. Yeah. So this could be a really unique pick. Um, 
you know, I don't know a lot about all the guys on this pick. I mean, I know Dan is I, not that it's anything wrong with it, but Dan's a little bit newer into the whiskey game. He's been picking up some great bottles lately and sharing those. Um, so it'll be really cool to hear his his ideas of what he came up with on this. You know pick. what? Dan what? has got a really good palate. He does have a really good uh, palate. And actually, he, he was, transferred the palate from his cigars, which he's got a great palate yeah. on, to whiskey, which, which we is were. Nice. Uh, he was showing me some bottles last night, and uh, like one of them was from Oakley Brothers Distillery, uh, and I had never. Oh. <laughs> there you it's go. Will's bag. Yeah, I'll drink yeah, out, I baby. Uh, <laughs> Um, I had never liked anything from Oakley Brothers Distillery, and he was like, "Oh, really, man? Like, I just picked up this bottle there. You'll have to try it." And I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm totally willing to do that. That's the place in Anderson." And how was it? It was good. Okay. It was well, good. It was their high rye bourbon, and it was okay. legitimately their juice. Well, I um I actually had a, a call so when from Dan Lisa tells Oakley you that from Oakley Brothers to she wanted to do some samples. I was a little leery only because I've tried a lot of their stuff early on. I tried on. their stuff early it was on, too. Not, I mean, it was young. It was very young. Yeah. I can't say it was bad. It was young. But uh, this this was a bourbon, which had no age statement on the bottle. So for them to call it bourbon with no age statement, means, it means that it's at least four years. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was the rule. Yep. So uh, Oh, so anything under four years, you have to call it no, the no, age no, statement. No. Yeah, you do have to. Anything under four years that's called a bourbon has to be age Why did stated. I not know that? I guess I didn't realize uh, that. It's weird because then the laws with straight bourbon are interesting, too. Because straight bourbon is the same way. Anything under four years that's a straight has to be age, state, age stated. But anything under two years can't be a straight which honestly this might be their first thing that's aged out to four years because i don't think they've been in business for much more than maybe four years so um this could be their first so product that this was out. i think it was it was their high rye bourbon i think it was called hell or rye water um goofy name I think you're right i think you're right actually a solid product so i was i was really excited to see that coming out of anderson yeah like you're talking about Which 20 minutes from here exactly downtown anderson um i'll reach out to them <coughs> and set up a, a tasting i mean if that's if that's the only problem i have is like i would love to bring them out for an entire tasting for the club but if that's the only thing that's going to be special, I don't know if it's worth bringing everybody out and bringing them out to do that. But there are worse tastings that have been done in that club. Maybe what we need to do is go over there and just go over there randomly and do a, a flight of their whiskeys. Hey, and see, man, if you see how they are. Now we're talking business at this point, but if you wanted to set up a time for us to meet them over there on some Monday, I would do that for I'd sure. I'd totally go to Anderson. Okay, I'll, I'll get that set up here. I may do it for this Monday. We'll see. I can't this Monday. Of course not. I'm just kidding. I don't. I'm, of course I not. Definitely do it. I got to go home, pet kitty. Yeah, he's Wait, a good there's boy. A lot of, there's a lot of bad things with that one. Hey, quit. Go home and pet the kitty. Quit it. <laughs> Say it. I mean, you cut a, off. He's a good dog. Cut off. He's, he's a, great a good dog. dog. What a good boy. Good boy. Pet the kitty. Who's a good boy? Hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will say this. Um, this is one of those bottles that, when we first, when I first ordered it, I think I ordered a case. Uh, did I get a case right right away? Yeah, I think we got a case of it because I like, yeah, everything Backbone's been putting out has been great lately, and it's been selling great. Dude, I think immediately after we opened the first bottle, I opened it. I ordered a second case, and I'm about to order a third case. Um, I think we've sold at least a case of it in the first few weeks, a couple weeks. We've had it maybe. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely oh, yeah. delicious. I mean, that's one of those things, too. As soon as you get a pour of it, you're probably going to want more. I, I got to do a bottle spotlight. Mm. So the Retro Hell kind of mi gets a little bit milder. Um, like I said, I'm only maybe three quarters of an inch down on it right now. Um, it's still, still got some black pepper to it, but it's not as strong on the pepper note it's definitely got more of the earthiness um that, um, that umami which is more of like a mushroomy kind of thing i think if i'm not mistaken on that 
Dang, are you like bringing everything out? It's just our new bottles. We haven't done a bottle spotlight. Before. Well, if you're following us on Instagram, you've seen it. I think it. the last bottle spotlight we did was with the Middle West stuff. Okay, well, let's so pull So you were talking about the retro hail. Pull this you... back, and we can pull this back, and then we'll just figure out where we can put yeah. the bottles. Okay. So a couple things. Start talking about them, buddy. We got in last week the Chattanooga Whiskey 111. Great this is model. a. It's a straight bourbon whiskey. Absolutely delicious. What Chattanooga is doing is different than anyone else. They have high malt content in all of their bourbons. The guy came out of a beer brewing background, uh, and they're based out of Chattanooga, and they are, if I'm not mistaken, the first distillery in Chattanooga because they were the ones that got the laws changed that actually allowed them to distill. Hey, and, you know, bottom line is they put the name Chattanooga on there. They're the first. They get it. Sounds good to me, man. So this That's is a, a good st- bottle. Stellar bottle. Uh, and I will say everything I've had out of Chattanooga. I know Scott's a big fan. Scott yeah. Johnson's a big fan Scott of that. Scott Johnson. Um, cheers. Um, that is everything I've had from them has been good. They have a bottle called Founders, which is delicious. Yeah. This one actually, the one eleven is right up there with it, man. It's a well, great bottle. I mean, and honestly, here at the Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge, this is an eleven dollar pour. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. No-brainer. Uh, 111 proof, $11. I think it's made to be. Craft Distillery. Craft Distillery. It is a really fruity, a fruit-forward bourbon. Absolutely delicious. Okay. And that's been Chattanooga Whiskey 111. Heck yeah. Okay. Next up, this was one that we got in this week. Uh, We got in the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. This is their seven-year Bottled and Bond. Great stuff. Honestly, it's just solid Heaven Hill. It is. Uh, I can't say anything much more about it. If you're a Heaven Hill fan, this will definitely do well for you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's we got it in yesterday, I think, yeah. and already this sold, week. This week, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, sold and, down the bottle. And, um, you know, full disclosure on Heaven Hill too. We actually, um, I've met a, a friend, a new friend now. He's local here. Um, he's a the regional sales rep, and um, looking forward to building a relationship with him. I want to continue to bring in more Heaven Hill because we would love to do a Heaven Hill product um, barrel yeah. pick down the road. Yeah. So um, we're working on that right now. So hopefully you'll see more Heaven Hill products in here besides the ones we've already had. I mean, we've got JTS Brown. We got Heaven Hill. We've got what else? Speaking is that, what of there? Heaven Hill products. Yes. Elijah there you go. Craig Toasted Barrel. And there's That's our next a brand one. new one. Yes. Um, this, if you're a fan of Elijah Craig, everybody just says it's smooth Elijah Craig. Not that Elijah Craig isn't already that way. Right. And smooth is a bourbon buzzword, but it is, it's just toasted Elijah Craig. Yeah. So if you can imagine Elijah Craig with some marshmallow notes yeah. in it. 94 absolutely. proof. So if you're looking for proof, you're yep. not going to get it here, but it's just good, good Elijah Craig. Yep. Okay. Next up, we're moving into the high class stuff. Yeah, I will tell you these four gates are thirty three a pour. Yeah, but which uh, honestly is probably cheaper than any place else you're going to find it. It is two hundred dollar uh, bottles. We got the four gate Indiana Foundation. This is aged ten years, um, and it's a small batch. And these are all MGP. Yeah. Um, so that's MGP whiskey. It is at one hundred eight point eight proof. Uh, just a great pour. It, that one has a really nice strawberry note on it. That uh, that in, it's just interesting to me. It's almost like strawberry syrup. Yeah, like what you'd get in uh, almost like the a candy. strawberry rhubarb kind of. Yeah, I guess not you, not a no. lot of the rhubarb, but kind of that strawberry rhubarb pie kind of uh-huh. thing. Yeah, macerated strawberries of some sort. Some sort. Some sort. The this next is one my is just Four stellar. Uh, we got the Four Gate Kelvin Collaboration uh, 4, which I don't know why they didn't put IV on here. They just decided to put I, 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 I. So somebody needs to tell Four Gate that they could have shortened you know, that. And have they you ever been looked fine. at a clock that has the Roman numerals on it? What? Almost every clock, if not all of them, have I, 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 I as the 4. That's just weird. I don't to me. get it. I don't yeah. get it why, but that's a, so. There must be like a rule. If you guys know the rule behind I, that, it'd be kind of if interesting there's to find one out. person that knows the rule, it'll be Scott Johnston. I was gonna say Jeff Love and Jeff Love and Jeff Love. Cheers, cheers, double cheers, double cheers to you guys. One more. Oh, yeah. Picking them both. 
So, so yeah, let us know if you know why that's the reason. But I've, that's one thing we've always noticed because my daughter's bought me a really awesome, you know, freestanding clock that had all the Roman numerals on it. And that's what they have on there is four eyes in a row. So, yeah. So these, this one is finished, which I didn't realize that. So it's finished in, it's a, a blend of straight bourbon and rye, finished in Australian tawny port mm -hmm. and, uh, and dark rum cast from Barbados in collaboration with Kelvin. So, nice. again, I'm this a sucker is, for a port uh, finish. This is Kentucky and Indiana uh, whiskey in here um, because they are a an NDP. They they don't distill. Yeah, uh, they just know how to how to treat their ingredients right. And honestly, this one to me, if I were to buy one of the four gates on the shelf that we've got, That's that it. that is a two hundred dollar bottle to me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, this one here. Maybe a little high price for what it is. Not that it's bad. It's still really good. And in all I mean, honesty, it, at the end of the day, price, our poor prices here are low enough where you can at least come in and try them. This one all day long. This one's this I mean, one's definitely worth it all day long. At the end of the day, long. the Indiana Foundation is still a four great four gate product, and it would have been fantastic if we didn't have that Kelvin collab as well. Um. That Kelvin collab just kind of shows it up. It really does, and it, it really it's does. delicious. But yeah, that's look it. at that ash on this thing, man! It is just absolutely perfect. All my talking, I just had to touch mine. I know up you did because I didn't. Uh, I saw yours going out on you. Yeah, it's a little. It's just got a, a slight wave to it, but this has got some great age on it. Which I don't ever have that problem on this cigar. My problem is normally slow down. Um, not this time. Oh, the other one we got that I'm not really willing to show you, but if you want to come in the shop and get it, more power to you. Basil Hayden toast. You yeah, know what it is. We've been getting that in here, you know, off and on. Um, it's, I, it's an eighty opinion, proofer. It's, it's one of the it's best easy Basil drinking. Hayden's I think it's come out. But yeah. most Basil Hayden Hayden stuff is at that low proof. Um, it is definitely a good, good pour for someone who's just getting into whiskey that wants to expand their palate a little bit. Um, but it's just a little lower proof than what you and I like. So, uh, You know what I did see that was interesting to me from Basil Hayden? <laughs> well, one, they just recently had a red wine cask finish, which I think would be interesting. Uh, talk about making something gentle and sweet even more so. Yeah. Um, but they put out a... Uh, I think they called it smoked, but it was like an Isla Scotch finish. Oh. Huh. And don't don't write that down and take me at my word, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was, was a Scotch finish. Um, oh, you know what's crazy, Rob? I don't know what's crazy. So what, when is cra what is crazy? I, is forgot, I forgot to tell people. Um, I was at an arcade bar in Nashville, Tennessee when I was there, and I had drank through all I say drank through all of it I drank through the, all the bottles is that what you're saying well I had quite sloshy drunk no I wasn't sloshy okay. drunk I was playing pinball man huh. you can be sloshy drunk <laughs> playing pinball you can't hit the ball right it's alright it's, um, it's a freaking game dude so I had I, I had finished off their bottle of wild turkey 101 cause that's like my hey there's nothing else on this bar um, that's actually worthwhile. Well, they did have a Blanton's and an Eagle Rare, but I just, I'd way rather. Uh, if you like Blanton's and Eagle Rare, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely enjoy it. I would just way rather have Wild Turkey 101. So that's what I was drinking. And then I capped off the rest of that bottle. Well, there was probably a quarter left. I had like two or three pours, you know. Um, you know what they did have? The Johnny Walker High Rye. Okay. So this is a Johnny Walker that is a high rye. Peated. High rye peated. It. Did you try it? Yeah, I, I bought a pour of it. Was it. Wait, is that a high dollar bottle? No. Okay. No. Uh, I, I got to pull up the specs I on this. I tend to lean away from Johnny Walker. Me too. Um. I mean, the double black's not bad. 
the blue is is a little overpriced. I mean, we have that on the bar here, but I mean, it's a crazy, ridiculously priced bottle. Um, yeah. huh. So, this is a high rye blended Scotch whiskey. The mash bill is oh my gosh! I've got to input my age on here just to talk about, or just it. fake it. Just throw it down to 1900s, and you're fine. Yeah, I know. So it is a 60% uh, rye mash bill, and then the rest of that is malt. Um, it's got to be weird. If I remember correctly, it was a sub forty dollar bottle. What? Yeah. So it's Johnny Walker Red with Pete. Pete and rye. <laughs> huh. That's a bottle. Interesting. It's got a green top on it. Um, that, to me... What was it, a $10 pour? It was cheap. Wow. It was way cheap. I was just intrigued enough to buy a pour. Like, that's one of those bottles that I saw at Meyer and was like, what the heck? Like, what is Johnny Walker doing with any rye? That, to me, is... I, and I literally told my other whiskey buddy who I was there with, I said, I would buy this over Blue Label any day of the week. Hmm. It it was actually interesting. I think Unique. it had some complexity, and it did something It did something different. Have you ever had a peated, rye-heavy scotch? No. No, and it honestly, it sounds nasty. It's not. That being said, I'm a rye what? whiskey lover. But. Well, and that's the thing. Going from Johnny Walker red all the way up to the blues and what the greens and all the different ones. Yeah. I don't feel like there's a big enough difference. I mean, obviously, going from red to black to blue is totally different. I yeah. get that. Red is n- not very good. I mean, if you like it, that's great. You got a you you got an accessible cheap bottle, and that's great. Yeah. But from really from black and up, I don't see the big difference in the pri- for the price difference in them. Yeah. Um, so that'd be interesting. I'm gonna have to try that now. Um, don't bring it in the shop. Oh, I won't. But I might try it though. If you see it out somewhere, it'd be a cheap enough pour that it's worthwhile. I just think. I mean, it's definitely uh, the podcast does this rating system where they say buy bar or pass. Like, right. It's a bottle you'd immediately buy. It's a bottle you should try before you buy, or it's just a don't get stay it. away. Yeah, um, but it's definitely a bar pour, and it, and at its price, it's a. Uh, I can't complain about it, man. I'll have to try it then. It, it's just interesting, is what it is, huh. and uh, I appreciated it for that. Well, there you go. There you go, Johnny you Walker go. High Rye. Um, that, this has been your weekly review. Um, make sure to email your favorite whiskey companies and have them send us press samples, and uh, we'll give them a shot. In all honesty, we will. Letting this we will do go that. Out. Yeah, I noticed that. You keep talking and not smoking. Start talking. More. Well, and that's one of the things too. Um, you know, it, it's fun because there's a lot. You know, we're in the fall now, so you're starting to see a lot more. You know, bottles starting to get released, stuff like that. Yeah, it's allocation um, season. It's we're it's getting into we're it. getting into some fun times. You know, like um, a couple buddies of, of ours, Will and Chris, went up to Old Fifty Five yesterday. Chris is still sitting right over here, by the way. Um, and they went up to Old Fifty Five yesterday. I was supposed to go with them, and I bagged out. wasn't feeling great, so I didn't go. But I did get a bottle from them on that. It was a single barrel, um, or I'm sorry, single malt, um, one of the first single malts they put out. It was actually really pretty good. Uh, I, I just only got the first pour out of it, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but it's getting to that point where we're starting to get a lot of these special bottles coming out that I think people are going to enjoy getting out there. Yeah. Um, got the um, the sweet corn cast strength that, that Dirk picked up from Indiana Bourbon. Um, on Facebook and Instagram, yeah, um, that one's going to be coming to the shop here for people to pick up. It's obviously you had to buy it online. Mm-hmm. We're just a pickup point. You had to pay for it before. Yep. I think he sold it out in like six minutes or yeah. something crazy like that. A three hundred twenty-five dollar uh, three hundred twenty-five dollar bottle. I don't know how many bottles he got. I would assume probably two hundred fifty bottles. Maybe. No, no, no way. Oh, uh-huh. I thought it was a big barrel. No. Okay. So his first. Oh, that's right. He well, only does. Five only they only do the 30s. small barrels. That's right. So, uh, so it probably be he about sold. 100. He sold fifty to start out with, and I think he had another 
30 or 40 afterwards. So about, okay. So close to 100 bottles total. Yeah, yeah. But he sold those out, and honestly, he's doing a great thing by giving money back to uh, the the fallen first responders. Um, yeah, Sarah, fun Sarah and it. Noah yeah. is the, the ones that we've been really, you know, unfortunate that we've lost them this year. But um, I, I love seeing people come together and, yeah, you're spending 325 bucks for a bottle, but really you're supporting something special. Yeah. And by the way, you're getting something ridiculously special in return. It is. And it's a, it's a really awesome thing. We're a pickup point for that. So if you ever are wanting to buy a bottle from him, you can always have it picked up right here at Final Third and in, in Ingles. And that being we'll said, have it for they're you. all sold out. So. They are sold out on this one, but he'll be doing more. Yeah. And it's not only going to be old 55. He does barrel picks with a lot of different people. Yeah. So he's going to be doing some other stuff, I'm sure, and we'll probably be doing similar type Absolutely. giveaways. Well, you know, Rob, last uh, last show we put out a call to see what people wanted a poetic reading of. We're not doing so, the poetic reading so of Scott what Scott Johnston. Scott Johnston decided that you need to read WAP, so give it to him. Well, apparently this is Scott Johnston's favorite song. Favorite song, WAP. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. I'm not doing all of it, but yeah. no, I'm not. Wait. <laughs> This is not what he said. This is not. Read it for him. This is not. Absolutely, wop. it is. Read it for this him. This is not. Wop. Read it for him. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. It does. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Strong. Yes. Jesus loves me. He does. This is not WAP. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, yes. Uh, apparently, Scott likes WAP a lot. Yeah, he does. But you know, Isaiah yeah. didn't want to throw WAP out there, so there no, you go. No, we're good. So if you, you got, haven't, if you haven't actually followed any of that, you need to get on um, get on any of your local platforms you like to listen to, Spotify or whatever, and look up William Shatner's spoken word poetry. It's it's magic. Yeah. Oh yeah, when he's doing, uh, you know, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody spoken word, there's nothing like it. Doesn't like it. Because I see a little silhouette of a man, Scattermoosh. You literally did this the last episode. I know. I know. It's good. It's good stuff. It's good. It's great stuff. So. Scott, if you really want WAP to be read on here, then you need to show up for the next reading, and you're going to sit here. And we got more microphones, by the way. Yeah. We'll have um, it set up in here, and you can actually do your spoken word reading so, of your favorite song. I mean, seriously, to our regulars that watch this and well, anybody who wants to be on here, hit us up. Uh, We're we'll going to be doing this on Saturdays we'll around a, noon. A Saturday morning for you to come in and uh, be on the show with us. We'd love that. And that's not saying you have to have a crazy palate or anything. We'll you just have to be able to read you know. WAP. You have to be able to read WAP. Yes. We're such a big platform that for you to get the publicity from this, you have to read WAP publicly. Yeah, and get banned with all of our tens of followers. Our tens of followers. <laughs> that is more real than I would like to think. It's very real. It's very real. Hmm. <laughs> this whiskey, I'll tell you, it just keeps getting sweeter and sweeter. That apple brandy note kind of keeps popping through. Um, it's kind of crazy, too, because, you know, it is very apple forward, but there's a citrus in there that I love the way it's playing on the palate. Mm, I love it. Yeah. Very creamy. Yeah. Buttery. Stop. <laughs> you're gonna, you're, You're just going <laughs> to... Burn that joke up in a dumpster. If you ever want to know what that joke's about, just ask me just when you're come in here and ask. You know who I think just pulled up? Mm -mm. Matt McKean. Yeah, nice. Our Saturday. Yeah, they usually regular. come on Saturdays. Matt and DJ will show up. Well, it's Saturdays. more Matt than DJ. DJ, yeah. if you're watching this, you better figure it out. He's out showing you. He is. He's here a lot more than you, DJ. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about you. I don't even remember what DJ looks like. Do you? Uh-uh. Uh, I've no. never seen him before. No. Never seen him before. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Wait, no, I thought, no, no, DJ's on the pick. I think DJ's on the old 55 pick today. Or he was on the list. Well, I don't care. He's not here. It doesn't count for anything. There he is. Matt, the man. (laughs) The man, the myth, the legend. DJ's on the pick today, isn't he? That's what I thought. Oh, I'm... Nice, nice. (laughs) Hey. He'd keep you waiting forever. Jason's a talker, man. Their distiller there, he'll talk your ear off. There's no way he'll be back by five. Jason Fruits, we love you, but you do talk a lot. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yes. Sure. <laughs> Rob said he was in there for a grab and go and ended up spending three hours there. It was great. I mean, it was, it was fun sitting and talking to him, but literally it was a day he was off work. And when I text him and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll stop by there and, and, and see you. So we went by and he gave us a little tour and got three hours later we walked out. Yeah. So good guy, though. I like him a lot. I mean, the beautiful thing is you can literally ask him anything oh, about bourbon. He knows it. And uh, he'll, he'll let you in on it. it. It's crazy. Well, like any distiller, and not in a bad way, but any distiller – you know, they're opinionated on what they believe, and that's what they believe. Yeah. And he's one of those guys, and it's like, it's not that he's wrong. I mean, he's, everything he says he is, makes is right on. He makes a great product. He makes a great product. And you know what? When you when you make good whiskey and you're distilling and you're talking about it, you, tell me you got a voice. You, yeah. you got a voice. So Lisa today is at the Ingalls Town Fair. Is mm-hmm. that what it is? It's the uh, Fall Repre- Festival. Ingalls Fall Festival yeah. representing Final Third Cigar Bar. Yeah. <laughs> She's selling some hats and – or not ha- – yeah, some hey, Matt, hats. Hey, Matt, Matt, come here real quick. We got we to gotta do a cigar haul with you. Oh, okay. Okay, hang on. I guess oh, we'll okay. wait until you have them. And, uh, yeah. But uh, she's selling hats. hats. I think she brought coffee. Some lighters, some coffee. Hopefully she's selling some lamps that Tam's been making up. She's not selling them? If you're looking for... Tam, uh, nobody even likes your lamps, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, like, you know, we got the holidays are coming up. I mean, if you're looking for some kind of a unique gift to give to, you know, your, your whiskey person or your cigar person or whatever in your life, and you don't want to just buy them a gift card, you know, we've got some really cool lamps that are made out of either whiskey bottles or um, cigar, cigar boxes. boxes. We also have some really cool line art that my, my daughter does. It's all, all um, original artwork of cigars and whiskey and stuff like that. If you're looking for something kind of special to hang up in your man cave or, or to give as a gift, yeah. I mean, we got some pretty cool stuff here. Obviously, we have all the great cutters and lighters and all that stuff, too. You know what would be a great cutter what? to give somebody for Christmas? Which one? The Calibri Quasar. Tell you what, it's a bad boy. It's a bad boy. I uh, I have used mine so much at the house this week. I literally have left it on my counter. Yeah, so you and, got your uh, V on one side and straight on the other side, and it's a f- literal five-pound brick. I mean, it's just such an awesome little cutter you can put in your house to have as your, so your desktop cutter. It took cutter. me 25 cigars to fill it up before I had to dump it. And, uh, I can see that. And it's got the honestly, nice little dial on the bottom. Yeah, that's great. Dump easy, it, so. it dumps like a piggy bank. Yep. Uh, but it's really easy to get everything out of there. It is. Which I was actually surprised by. I'm not saying that I don't trust Calibri, but, you know, sometimes you get those little piggy bank openings on the bottom of cutters, and it's you got to shake it around just the right yeah. way, tickle it just right to get it all out of there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 But, yeah, it's definitely a nice – it's one of those cutters, too, that most people are probably not going to just buy one for themselves. Some people will, but Some it's a hell will. of a gift because Isaiah it's not did. a cheap gift, but it's one of those gifts that you're going to be able to use forever. Yeah. Um, I like it. I love it, man. Uh, well, and right now it's sharper than my – sharper and more reliable than my regular Calibri V. Granted, this thing has been with me for coming up on three years now. Yeah, and the I've got one. The blades did get replaced, but see, I've got one that's about five or six years old, and I can still cut a cigar with it fine. 
it's not as crisp as my one that's only a, a couple years old. Yeah. But um, they yeah, still work the, fine. Yeah. Are, what are you complaining about, Tam? <laughs> she just told me to shut up. Somebody needs to send her home. Grandma's getting grumpy over here. Grandma's there. getting grumpy. <laughs> okay, Matt, co come around Rob's okay. side and give yeah. us a haul. Yeah, let's see yeah, what your. I didn't say Mike. I know. You said Mike? There you go. Okay. So, what'd you buy? Okay, today? first of all, what pour'd you get, Matt? Uncle Nearest. Uncle Nearest. Uh, that's black. The, yeah, label. black label Uncle yeah. Nearest. I don't remember. 1856. Okay. 1856. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So then I got Aroma Craft uh, Neanderthal. Nice. Absolutely. Uh, Stolen Thrones Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Nice. And a this is foundation, right? Tabern yeah. Tabernacle. Tabernacle. Nice. Hey, there we go. Go full body, y'all. Go home, right? Yeah, right. Dark and nice. full body. Nice. You can't beat it, man. That uh, cool. that Neanderthal is a spicy meatball. I love it. Yeah, love it too. It's yeah, great. Yeah. Doesn't I, matter what else. I don't like about it's a flat cap, but yeah. it, it, it makes me come back because of the flavor profile on it. Yeah, that's a great cigar. Well, cool, yeah. man. Go cool. we'll we'll lighter up and enjoy. These are my favorites. I, I don't remember. I think I've had one of these, but I can't remember. So it's okay. really solid. It's yeah. very solid. Super yeah. solid. Yeah. Right. You'll like it. You'll Thanks. like it. Oh, good. Hey, thank you, bud. Matt McKean. Oh my gosh, I just knocked the ash on that. Oh, on amateur. That microphone. Amateur hour over here. Oh, dear. What Lord. the heck? Hey, see, see you, Chris. Have a good night, man. Enjoy the rest of Will's pours. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Want to get in the pulpit part? I think we should do second, third notes first. Okay, we can do that because I'm well into the second, third now. I'm, not I'm a little further than you because you kept having to keep, let yours go out. I keep being like Rob and talking too much oh, and letting damn. it go out. But this cigar has held up well to relights. Well, mine are more touch-ups than full-blown relights. But That's the uh, 1502 10th anniversary or Anniversario 10. Good cigar. I'll always just say 10th anniversary. Yeah. Because. I mean, it, it definitely, you know, in the second, third, you're getting a little bit more of the, um, it's definitely a little bit more medium. Yeah. Um, when you first light it up, it's a little stronger, gets more medium. This is one that kind of goes in reverse for me a little bit. Okay. Once you get in the final third, it does kind of pop up a little bit more, yeah. but not a lot. Yeah. Um, it's definitely one that starts off a little bit spicier on the, the retro hill. On, uh, on this right now for me and I don't know if it's just because I've got it with this pour, is more of like pie crust. Yeah. It, um, oh, it's, yeah. It's still got that cedar quality to it, but it's almost like kind of buttery pie crust. Yeah, butter and cinnamon, cinnamon. vanilla ice People cream. People are going to be confused no, if you no. keep saying that. No, it's it's definitely got that pie crusty kind of thing going there. It's kind of like a, a unsweet, you know, graham cracker pie crust. Yeah, on the retro hail, there's a... Uh, there's like a dry fruit quality for me. Uh, very little spice on the retro hail. Yeah, it's kind of leathery um, and earthy on the on the retro hail at this yeah. point. Yeah, totally. And uh, to the poor. Mm-hmm. This thing just keeps getting sweeter and sweeter with the cigar. Oh. I am telling you, it's like people keep dumping uh, like the apple pie filling. On your vanilla bean ice cream. Apple pie filling with the caramel drizzle on top. Okay, yeah, totally. So good. On there. Back to the smoke after the sip. It brought out more of the cedar and almost more of the cooked cinnamon notes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that is a... Uh... <coughs> you all right? Yeah. Did you try and retro hair? No. Choke on it like Nick? No. Nope. It's just the uh, allergy season. Allergy season. Yeah. I found ragweed growing in my yard this week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you cut it out of your yard and grill it up and make a little bit of a ragweed stew? Well, I just treated it like uh, the vegans do dandelion and threw it in a salad. Eat it. Yeah. It's all good. Put, the, put some raspberry vinaigrette on it. It's great. Hey, I'll tell you what. Um... <laughs> Those dandelion greens are actually pretty tasty. Really? If they're cooked right, yep. 
You cook them. I love greens. Well, I mean, love I can get greens. down with collard greens, but I have. I love all the greens, man. I have never eaten uh, dandelion greens. I like my greens. How do you cook them? Just throw them on the stove with a little olive oil. Let a them go. A little bit of ollie. The problem is with greens when you're cooking them, is like you can throw. I mean, are you, you throw cooking a whole them? Pan full of them. Yeah. Piled up, and by the time you get done, you got one serving. Yeah. So but are you cooking them like collard greens? Oh yeah. Okay, so you're talking like. If you're doing it up like bacon or ham hock in oh, there, yeah. Oh, yeah. a little bit of vinegar. Uh, yeah, and I don't even do vinegar. I just do the olive oil and sometimes do a little bit just butter and stuff, olive oil. Okay. I love all the greens. Yeah. Greens are good. See, my thing is, is I don't know which ones I'd be able to pick from. You just eat them, and if they make you feel sick, you don't eat them again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, most of the ones in my yard have dog pee on them. Oh, so. That's It'll fine. wash That's off. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Come on. Yeah. It's not like you never. Well, never mind. We're gonna go there. What are you? T- <laughs> what do we? No. You already started. No. I say it's not like you've never had ki- Kitty's little thing you know, in your so mouth. That's before, so rough. So. I wish I would have never instigated. <laughs> you that. asked me. You I asked. did. You asked. I did. I wish I never would have. Uh, okay. I take it back. Poor son. Kitty Quit. on me. Quit it. You're done. <laughs> Cut off. No jabs at Jeff or Nick this week. Well, we got to give them a break. Yeah. They acted like they listened, but I don't think Jeff actually heard what we said last well, week. Well, I think I think he may have, but he might have been a little hurt. You think so? I think his, I think his little um, feelings were hurt a little bit. Poor little Jeff. <laughs> so Nick pretends to be hurt, and yeah. Jeff is actually hurt. Well, and that was one of the things, too. I, I had asked because Lisa thought we were kind of being a little jerks to him on the, the pulpit podcast when we were on there. Him, man. And I asked him, I'm like, Are, were we good? And he's like, no, man, it was cool. We, we're, we're good. I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. It kind of fit the banter, so. I thought it did. Well, that's good. Tam's over there staring at us now. Tamuel. <laughs> Tamuel. <laughs> she, uh, she prefers Tamuel or Tamothy. <laughs> Timothy, I like that. <laughs> That's her full name. Ta- yeah. Timothy. Timothy Suella. Suella. Is her is her middle name Sue? Yes, Tammy Sue. Tammy Sue. Tamara Sue. Tamara Sue. That's funny. And man. I'm watching watching Matt over there stealing product from our shelves. That's nice. Timothy will get him. <laughs> 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 Matt's like, I'm like, I thought I snuck really well over there to grab that. Yeah. That's <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Mike. 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 <laughs> oh. At least Tamith is closer than Mike. You better hush up. You're live and I will uh, your nickname. Uh, Mike, hey, come my over here. Was Put Robbie. It out. I still have people calling. That was only you. What's that, Tam? Come over here no, on the mic. No, say no, it. say it in public. No. Say I've it already forever. got stupid broccoli. I don't want to hear that anything else. Broccoli. It's because you're a pothead, Rob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't think the boys that actually called me broccoli were the ones even knew that had anything to do with with weed at I the don't time. Think so either. Uh, I watched. They watched The Office one time, and oh, broccoli Rob. Yeah, I had never. I never knew it was a food dish either. Oh yeah. Yeah. R A A B. Yeah. Uh, it's good stuff too. It tastes good. We should uh, get some and eat it on the show, just we in honor of you eating broccoli Rob. <laughs> Cannibalism show. Broccoli <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob eating broccoli know, Rob. I don't know about that. We need to come up with some nicknames for Isaiah now. No. Oh, yeah. Isaiah's had his fair share of bad nicknames. What, what, what are some of them? So there was one uh, middle school youth camp I was at. I was leading worship at it. And uh, the other guy who was with me in the band, he already had the nickname Little Young Oreo. Little Young Oreo. Well, it was Lil Young Oreo. Well, of course you know, it's Lil. Lil, yeah. yeah, Lil. yeah. Um, and they were like, You're ah. a youth group. I mean, come on. Oh, we need, we, need to make, we need to make a nickname for you. And I was like, 
I think I'm good. You know what they came up with for me? Mm. Hot buns. Hot buns. Oh, hot like buns. That. Here's the deal. I like that. Cinnamon hot buns over here. I, uh, I was like, you guys cannot tell your parents about this. This sounds terrible. Hot buns. Yeah, our worship, our worship leader, hot buns. Hey, I think you should be introduced like that every week at Sounds church. Sounds like you're just commenting on my butt. Maybe that's what they were doing. They could have been. Mm-hmm. I, I can promise you, it's not that great. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's if that's the way you swing, buddy, that's all. That's fine. There's if nothing wrong the with that. Sw- I'm just saying. What are you talking about? No judgment here, my friend. No judgment at all. Rob, you're ridiculous. Well, I'm not the name Hot Buns. You're ridiculous. Hot Buns. I like that. <laughs> I, I I literally got that. And uh, I was That's like, why you want the Krispy Kreme hat from Crowned Heads, because you just want that Hot Buns name with Krispy Kreme going. You just call you Krispy Hot Buns over there. Krispy Kreme donuts. Hot Buns are like donuts. It's the same thing. Hot buns. I think that's a stretch. No, no, it's that's not. A stretch. Have you ever had fresh yeah, Krispy Kreme? They're still not as good as most, most donuts out there. I don't care what you say. You're a lie. No, Krispy They're, Kremes Krispy are Kremes basic glazed, glazed donuts. Fresh. Yeah, I'll put them in a the microwave, heat them up. They're no, all good. No. Same. Rob, when we go to Nashville, we're going to go and go to the Krispy Kreme place and get basic donuts. Basic oh. Freaking oh, donuts. my gosh. No. What's your favorite donut place? I'm not a huge donut fan. I do uh, like Jack's around here. Jack. Jack's donuts what? are good. No. I like, I like our local one, local you know donut shop we had. It was called Quack Daddy's. They made fresh donuts when you come in there and okay. made them donuts. What's your go-to donut? I like cake donuts. Okay. I can get down with I that. I do like cake donuts. I, like, um, I, I really, really like um, the sour cream Cake donuts are delicious. I, I can get down with that. So my um, favorite donut place around here is in Greenfield. It's a sweet shop. And they're uh, maple glazed with uh, peanuts is fantastic. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It is delicious. We should do a donut pairing on here. You don't have... Rob, do you see me? I am clearly over 200 pounds. It's we not like you ever pushed a donut away. Yeah, <laughs> I know. There have been a couple times. Like, I'm not a big fan of cream-filled or jelly-filled. It's like, hey, when I'm eating this donut, I don't want to be surprised when this flavor is coming on. Like, yeah. why couldn't you just design one that's full all the way through? Why is, why is it just got to be an inch of cream in the middle? I'll have to I'll have to pick up some from our because there's a new donut shop in town I can't think of the name of it. Um, they bought out they where Quack Daddies used to be. They bought it out. And they're now ice cream and donuts, which I will say I've heard getting a fresh donut with a scoop of ice cream on top of it's kind of magic. Yeah, probably need to try that sometime soon. Is it a is it a chain place or is no? It- I well I don't think so. I don't know. There's a new one that's coming around here called o- Ohana. No, that's what it is. That's what it's called. It? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. That's what it's called. I forgot uh, the name of it. So oh, it's in downtown Pendleton here. So yeah. So there's uh, one on Brooks School, School Road, actually over by where Scott Johnston lives. Cheers, Scott Johnston. And uh, you can like, you can deck out your donut any way you want to. They'll that's put the cereal it on it and all that deal. See, yeah. I used to always get when Quack Days was around. What I always get is the uh, the vanilla cake donut or the blueberry cake when they had it, which was insane. Get that made up. They make it fresh for you while you wait. Slash all that with some vanilla vanilla icing on top and then throw fruity pebbles on top of it. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. Uh, there's so a good. new place over by my house, and it's a, it's a Hispanic donut place that I've heard great things uh, about, but I don't remember what it's called. And that's no help for a podcast. Churros? Uh, no, man. If I want churros. Churros are good. I am going to me Mexico off of German Church and 30th. 
Okay. And uh, it's a Mexican grocery store. And yeah. I, I'll actually shop there all the time because at those international style grocery stores, their produce is way cheaper. Yeah. Like, And usually fresher. It is a lot better quality. The cilantro you buy there will actually last a week in your fridge and not just two days. Nice. It's magic. Nice. <laughs> but uh, Not a huge yeah. cilantro fan. Lisa loves cilantro. I'm not a big fan. Tastes like soap to you, doesn't it? Kind of does, yeah. Yeah, you guys got the bad gene. Uh, do you even like salsa? I do. Like fresh salsa? A little bit of, a little bit of cilantro is fine. Okay. A lot of cilantro is too much. Like if you're eating street-style tacos that are just cilantro like can go cilantro in and onion... On whatever meat and it's corn It's got to have more than just cilantro and onion for me. It's got to have some uh, tomato spice and you know some uh, either cayenne or jalapeno peppers in there and stuff like that. Have you ever had like uh, the taco shop hot sauces where it's literally a garlic and jalapeno sauce? Mm -hmm. that they roast them like they roast them until they char and they just blend it up with oil. It's good stuff. Those, that's my absolute good stuff. favorite. If I'm ever I just I, I I don't like it when they overdo the cilantro. It's almost like our sauce is not that great, so let's throw a bunch more salt you know, cilantro in there and call it cilantro. I mean, you it's could almost throw cilantro and lime in every single like canned salsa, and it'll be way and better. That's though. what I do whenever I have it. If it's over over um, cilantro, I usually squeeze a lime on top of it. And it tones okay. it down. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So speaking of me, Mexico on German Church and Thirtieth, they which, have a place. They would next be a great sponsor. Yeah, please sponsor me. Uh, there's a place next door. It's a taco shop, and it's called El Taco Toro. Um, that place is exquisite. Yeah, their al pastor tacos, fantastic. Uh, I don't think there's a flour tortilla in that entire place. See, I will say, Lisa. She went and met a, met a friend over at Torchy's Tacos, which is new, oh, new to our area. Dude. New to our area. I'm talking about yeah, authentic no, tacos. I know, but I'm saying it was actually pretty good. I was, okay. I was pretty impressed with it. It tasted really good. Their brisket taco was really, really tasty, yeah. um, which that's the first time I ever had Torchy's. So. Oh, okay. But uh, Nagos is kind of popular around here. It's okay. It's not. It's they're, not my. They're jam. Korean barbecue taco solid. Though. Haven't had that one yet. Yeah, uh, but me I mean, makes it's not Taco Bell. Come on. All right. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, do you have a Doritos Locos taco? <laughs> yeah. Just meat. Maybe a little cheese. Yeah. Some lettuce that is sketchy. Sketchy lettuce. God, yeah. Um. But Did you know that iceberg lettuce was actually created in the 50s for hamburgers? There's absolutely no nutritional value in iceberg lettuce at all. And 90% of the salads you get at fast food, you think you're getting something special, has no nutritional value at all. Mm. Literally could drink water instead of eating it and get the same nutritional value out of iceberg lettuce. Where'd Not, you hear that? Oh, it's true. Look it up. Uh, no, That's where'd why, you hear that? That sounds made up. No, Rob. no, you look it up. We're fact checking, Rob. That's why you always want to get your salads with greens, you know, spring mix or something like that, because you're getting some nutritional value. Iceberg lettuce has zip, nothing. It's worthless. It is a condiment for a hamburger to make it look like it's healthy. Okay, I just googled iceberg lettuce. Nutrition. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, uh, for one leaf, one calorie, it has one milligram of sodium, 11 milligrams of potassium, 0.2 grams of carbohydrates, 0.1 grams of dietary fiber, 0.2 grams of sugar, 0.1 grams of protein, and uh, vitamin C, iron, vitamin B6, magnesium, calcium, vitamin D, and, uh, I think the word you're looking for well, is men, worthless. It has zero percent of any of those things. Exactly. It's so not, it's not worth anything. It's it, not worth anything. It was literally designed in the '50s for McDonald's to add to their freaking hamburgers because they wanted to make it look like it was healthy. 
Don't eat iceberg lettuce, people. Don't do that to yourself. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. it. There's nothing right with it either, though. So why put it in your in your mullet, man? Why are you sitting there eating that? Put shit? it in your, your mullet. Go it, go it, go it. <laughs> your mullet. I was thinking, just I saw an your, iceberg. I saw your hair. Mullet. I saw your hair. And I thought, man, you need a mullet. That's what my. That's where just I was going. An with that iceberg lettuce mullet. mullet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we need some pictures drawn up of Isaiah with a mullet. I'll pass. Mm. Isaiah, other than I know, otherwise known as. Iceberg lettuce mullet. No. <laughs> what is it? Honey buns. No. That's that what was we need not to, it. That's what we're going to start calling you, honey buns. Honey buns. For sweet buns. Sweet buns. Sweet buns. Rob, that sounds like I need to take something up with HR. Honey buns. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Robbie. Bow chicka wow wow. Oh, Robbie over there. Hey, we got more customers coming in. Nice. Hey there. Oh. So what are you getting now on the cigar? Cigar is embracing a lot more of those bready qualities. Nice. That, What's up, guys? Um, for this pairing, I'm associating as like buttered bread or almost pie crust, like a fresh made pie crust. Um, still has some of those woody <laughs> cedar notes in there. You all right? You need very to learn woody. How to smoke. Very woody now. Yeah. Hey, Tam, Ghost. Oh, that retro hail just lit you up. Yeah, it got nice. me. Nice. Go sell cigars. Shush. That's not my job. It's our job. It's our job. Okay, I'll give you double pay. And we'll put you over your mark so that way you can't get paid next week. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy old Tam. Old lady, old she's lady. always on about Complains, something. Complains, man. Yeah. Just old, old cantankerous old woman. Yeah, she's always complaining about her arthritis. Her knees aren't working today, so she's pretty mad about having to work. Good thing is she's getting that age now where, you know, hips and shoulders are all, you know, half price at this point. So <laughs> she'll be fine. Yeah. She'll be fine. You know, her dementia's really kicking in lately. It really is. It's really rough. Dude, there's days, man. I feel like it, too. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> old man Rob, old lady Tam. She's my much, much, much older sister. She's like 70. She's, she's pushing 70. Yeah. You know, she keeps showing me. She keeps thinking that they're different pictures, but she shows me the same picture of her grandson every oh, single yeah. day. Yes. Same exact one. He's a cute one. She's she acts like one. it's a brand new picture. She does. Yeah. She uh, does. She forgets. She does. She forgets a she's, lot. She's not all there. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she watches this. Of course not. Probably, I wouldn't if I were her. I wouldn't either. Yeah. Do you watch our shows after you post them? No. I have to edit them. That's enough. Hey. Yeah, the black pepper's kicking up that. some. I need to top off your bottle or your glass. Top it off. I'm still good. I poured you heavier than I poured me. So Sure, I sure you did. Sure. Yeah, sure. whatever. Whatever. Science. Science for science. Yeah, Rob got a, uh, a new old Forester pick, and Ooh. it's the same bottle that I have. But I texted him and I said, "You know, we're gonna you're gonna have to let, let me have a pour for science." For science. Yes, you know, just gotta well gotta make sure QC's on hey, point. Hey, can you? Who was it that got me that bottle? Do you remember what his name was? Scott Johnston. Exactly. Yes. Thank you, Scott, for giving me that bottle. It was the. Uh, it was the old Forester picked from Elite Beverage. All the dub, single ladies. All the single ladies. Yep. And you know what? But I, I've had all the single ladies in my mouth quite a bit, and it's been delicious. <laughs> I'm just going to say right now. Oh, my god. They gosh. are delicious. Yeah, your fourth pour of the day Ooh. is really showing, Rob. I'm good. You're good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm telling you, though, it is delicious. Now, no, the, actually, the one we need to be doing Later on today is the. Um, did you bring your um, your cigar ma cigar batch from cigar match from uh, Joseph Magnus? I didn't. Damn you! Say uh, we're going to be doing a doing a little bit of a uh, experiment with all the different cigar batches. 
when we're not open after hours. Yes. When yeah, because we can't not here. We wouldn't do that here. No, unless we're no. closed. But for um, a private event, it'll be because because uh, the cigar batch. I've got the was mine the. Uh, Gosh, remember when, this in the 90s. One, was it nineties? I don't know. I, you know, for my birthday, I was real appreciative. I had, I think, three different um, barrel picks from that. I mean, seriously, so that's good. One of Rob's like goat pours. My favorites, yes. Uh, and I've got eighty three. Yours was eighty three. Which 83 is one of the highest proof ones I've seen, which is like 126 point something. Yeah, I think the one I've got back there that I picked was 120. It was around 125, I think. Yeah. Um, but that's the one thing. I, also, I say it all the time. They named theirs the Cigar Batch, and it is the well, absolute... Cigar Blend. Cigar Blend. My bad. My bad. Yeah, cigar like Blend. Cigar it bad. is the absolute best um, pairing with a cigar of any of the cigar blends I've had out there. Yeah. Or yeah. Cigar Batches, for that matter. Do you know what? We recently tried Midwinter Night's Dram by uh, High West. High West. It was delicious. Do you know what the craziest part about that to me is? Mm. Our Starlight Rye finished in port barrels is very Midwinter Nights Dram profile. It really was. It's the only just thing not was, as spicy. It wasn't, as, it wasn't quite as rye forward. Yeah. Um, but very similar in the profile. It is. And a lot lower cost point. A lot <laughs> lower cost point. A lot easier to get. You can That can be found at the Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge, 180 East Broadway, Ingalls, Indiana. Yes, and we still have probably a good 30... 30, 35 bottles left of that. That's it? Yeah, I know. We've sold over half of that. We need to do another barrel pick. Yes. Well, the last couple I've had set up are all fallen through. Yeah. And it's been kind of a shame because I was trying to do a couple and couple ones. The guy up. from uh, mm. Carol was talking about doing one with, with Nulu. And as much as I told him we'd be interested. Um, Nulu's got some great stuff, too. The only thing is, is it's all MGP. It is, but so is Backbone. I would do one with Backbone over Nulu, though. Every Backbone MGP that I've had has been stellar. I've, I've got to if I could feel that. I've got a filler out for us on that. So, yeah. if I could call that Laird's Applejack Barrel our oh, pick, my God, no problem. Oh, like I in a heartbeat. They could have sent me a sample of that, and I'd been like, yeah, I'd slap my name on that. No issues, no questions asked. Well, and that was kind of the way it was with our our barrel pick. You know, we tasted through about 20, 25 barrels, and we got to that one, and we tasted it, and we're like, that's it. That's the one. That's it. It was so good. But you're right. We need to get that done. I was, I thought I had two or three different ones set up, and they've all pushed off till at least first quarter of next year. Yeah. I got to get one this fall because we're Which, running out of time. I mean, we could run a couple uh, at the beginning of next year and just – because some of these people, they take three, four months to actually get it to you. Well, and um, one of the ones I'm looking at is the um, the Dragon's Milk cask strength. Yeah. And um, the only way you can get the cask strength right now is through a barrel pick. Yeah. And they don't have any barrels available for us to pick from until next year. So I'm on the list to get us going for that. So hopefully first quarter we'll get us something going for that. Um, definitely want to do one with old 55 down the road whenever we're available. I mean, he's out. He's literally out till 2025 on his barrel picks right now, and he's going to try to squeeze us in on one at some point. So, I mean, I that's, that's know crazy. That'll even happen though. It may not. Um, I know he definitely likes to support local businesses like that, like us. So hopefully yeah. we get in on one. Um, because, I mean, his stuff is just it's, it's good. It's just good. Well, that being said, Dan Hart is repping us today there. He's Dan. wearing the uh, the final third uh, Hawaiian shirt. So cheers to Dan Hart. Uh, you're awesome, and I am so happy yeah, Dan's that you're on that our, pick. Uh, flowery shirt today. So good job, Dan. Cheers. Cheers, Dan. Dan, Dan. Dan, Dan the, the cigar man. man. Dan the man Hart. Follow him on Instagram on Dan the Cigar Man. Yeah. Yep. And you actually should. 
Uh, he has good content. So he's falling down the tater tater hole pretty hard, though, isn't he? What do you mean? He's starting to actually get out there and hunt bottles, and he's finally getting some good bottles and trying new stuff. And oh, he was he's showing got some pretty good special. He was showing stuff. us his uh, stash and like. What was the one that he brought in for you guys to sample last night? After hours, of course. After hours, so he brought in uh, the Heller Rye Water. Yeah, yeah. From Oakley, was that and what he? He brought? also brought the. Uh, it was one from Boundary Oak. It was something infantry, something or another, and that one was. Is that the eighty second, Airborne? The one that comes in a canteen bag. Yeah, but I mean. It's glass bottle, but it's shaped kind of like a canteen almost. Yeah. Yeah. So it, we had that before, at least one of their one of their so regular releases. It was okay. The thing is with it, with that bottle, and my my, I guess it's my thing with Boundary Oak now. I feel like they've been around long enough that they could put out something over two years old. Yeah. But that bottle was two years, and right. uh, I. Well, that's the way the Lincoln and my old Kentucky home are. Yeah, but those they're are both, cheaper. They're cheaper, but they're also like under two years old. You know how much this bottle was? Uh-oh. 90 bucks. Yeah. Is it good? And it's not a bad whiskey. But I told Dan this last night. I said, all the way up until the finish, you, it's a very pleasant experience. And then it reminds you that it's youthful. Like, it has that slightly vegetal quality about it. And uh, I – sorry, Dan. We're calling you out. You no. paid for packaging on that one. And uh, he knows that. Yeah. And But that's the thing is I, I'm not – Willing to support Boundary Oak if they're doing stuff like that. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. That's where I'm at with them. But I am, I'm kind of excited to hear that Oakley's putting out some good stuff now because I, being a lo- another local distillery, I mean, we've got one down the road here, five minutes down the road called uh, Moon Drops. I'm excited that they're putting all, all their whiskey back, letting it age for at least four years before they release it. Yeah. Right now, the stuff you're getting from Moondrops is all MGP barrels. Although they're six-year-old barrels, it's still MGP. I can't wait to try their own stuff. Yeah. It, you know, They're doing it right. Um, I hope, like any young distillery, I hope they don't get a name for themselves for their sweet stuff only. Yeah. Um, which they easily could because apparently their sweet stuff's really good, at least for people that like sweet stuff. I, they do a lot of moonshines and rums and that. stuff like that. Um, but I get why they do it. I mean, when you open a distillery, you got to put out product you can sell immediately. Otherwise, you can't be open for four years. Yeah. So I, I get why they're doing that. I just hope that they, when they get to the point where they're able to release the stuff, they wait till four years and actually release something special Absolutely. and not, you know, jump the gun at two years and say, oh, here's our whiskey. Yeah. And then not get a name for it. I mean, Which there are other, a there lot are other of the, ones in northern Indiana, you know, that, that do that crap that's just like, it is what it is. They're not aging in no. 53G barrels. Though. Which Moondrops is, which good on them they're putting it out in 53 gallon barrels letting it age properly got the rick houses built they're filling yeah. them up so yeah. yeah it'll be interesting to see what they do i don't be. know what old 50 uh, or um oakley brothers i'm not sure how they're aging their stuff uh, i'm not sure either they're downtown anderson in an old old brick building um they could be just putting it on the second floor of that who knows i'll i'll go over there and do a, a little deep dive on them and figure that out this yeah. next couple of weeks yeah we'll check them out but I'm in the final third of this. Finalthirdcigar.com. Finalthirdcigar.com. Indeed. It is uh, leather, cedar, leather, and earth right now. Yeah. Um, there's not any of that bready quality. There's almost a pepper right at the end of the palate, but it's like it's not the spicy parts of the pepper. It's like the vegetal parts. With the whiskey, it's just got all that. The retro has got red pepper on it on the cigar. It does, but the whiskey itself is just the. I mean, it's got such a, a viscous mouthfeel to it. Yeah, it just hangs on the palate with that, 
that apple brandy kind of note to it and the um, creaminess. I mean, there, there's just so much sweetness in the whiskey. For 122 proof, you'd think this would be lighting our palate up. It's not. It's not. It's so sweet. Uh-uh. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. It it is. Uh, it's still in that apple dumpling, apple pie range as far as the whiskey goes, but there's a lot more spice to it. Um, it's like the same sweet and spicy thing as you'd get in like a Mexican hot chocolate. You know, not with you know without replace the chocolate with all of the apple pie right. qualities. Right. And the retro hill on this, like you said, the uh, red pepper. Um, I mean, it's definitely building on the on the palate, and it just hangs in the nostrils. So when you retrohale it, you're like, "Oh, there's not a lot there." And then all of a sudden, just a minute or you know, a few seconds later, you're like, "Whoa, there oh, it is!" There she is. And um, so it's definitely got a nice retro on it. Absolutely, very well aged cigar. I wish I I knew what the age statement was on the cigars. How long they I aged mean, them before they put it's them out? Not nothing, because these uh, the cellophane that comes off of these is lightly yellowed. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, I mean, you know they've been sitting on these for a little while before they released them. They did a fantastic job with these. They do, and that's one thing I do like about 1502 is they don't they don't rush their products out. Um, everything I've gotten in here from any of their, their lines, whether it be just their regular stuff or something special, is always aged right. Yeah. You know, I... You you get some cigars that come in and they're a little green and you gotta kind of wait for a few weeks for them to be ready to smoke. Right off the truck, these things are ready to go. Yeah, and and I appreciate that absolutely. And we are working on doing an event with them. Uh, I don't know if it'll be this fall or first of the year, but we'll be doing an event with 1502 and having Enrique, which Enrique is the owner of 1502 and Global Premium Cigars, and also the Master Blender. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll hopefully have him come out and Soul, which is his wife, and also the one that runs the business. Have them come out and do an event for That'll us. That'll be awesome. So it'll be a good time. Oh, I've been a huge supporter of them. I mean, I found them out in Myrtle Beach when I was out there on vacation. Found the black gold. Fell in love with the brand, and I've been a big fan of theirs ever since. You don't find a lot of um, a lot of their cigars in our area, at least. Um, a lot of that's because they just don't have a lot of reps right now. Yeah, they're basically doing it all. You know, you buy it directly to them. And uh, which is great, but you don't see them as much around. Yeah, which is a shame because their cigars are fantastic. Black gold, black gold, ruby, ruby blue Nicaragua. Sapphire. Yeah, Nicaragua. Those are smoking. The XO fantastic. is fantastic, oh which goodness. has got 18 years of age on it too. And the 10th anniversary. Yep, all of them. All Absolutely of them are stellar. stellar. Well, thanks for hanging out with us for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, again, like I said, we're down the final third. It's not going to change any uh-uh. from this point forward. So, but yeah, thanks a lot for listening, guys. Um, you can get this pairing in here this following week. Just come in and, and try it out. Get the 10% discount on the pairing. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Absolutely. So you can follow me on Instagram at Final Third Cigar. You can find me at The Whiskey Pastor. Thanks again, guys, and we will see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.